Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm facing um one of my viewers here. Okay, so our starting hand is not amazing. But we've got Dead Judgment. Which is probably quite good against Rastrabic. Signet, okay. Let's go for the Tide Taker here. He can take one for the team. Every day of judgment, he leaves behind his spirit. Cool flavour afterlife, I like it. The flavour gets weird when you consider some people leave two souls behind. I find that quite funny actually. There's got War 2. Okay, so we will pass to Zombie. Yeah, Afterlife 2. How do two souls leave your body? That's kind of... Uh, he obviously, this card doesn't have Afterlife 2, but there are some cards. In fact, I think there's one of Afterlife 3. Kind of creepy when you think about it. It's like the film Insidious when um, there's like a kid who's possessed by demons. Maybe even multiple demons. Uh, so yeah, we're not going to block this because we want the Tide Taker to meaningfully die. So, oh, Celebrant. So next turn, definitely going to use Day of Judgment, unless they've got... Hmm, it's a bit suspicious that they have three mana up. Could be for Teferi's Protection or something. No? Okay. I feel like I got quite lucky there, getting two for one. Drain is for two. Yeah, it's quite nice to randomly uh, see people in the Discord and stuff. Just uh, goes to show how small the community kind of is in a way. But it's not a bad thing. Maybe it is a bad thing. Maybe the community should be larger. Because then if it was larger, then there'd be more variation in decks. I think one of the issues is people get put off because they see stuff like, you know, Atraxer and big decks. And they, um, they, they get put off. So what happens is when a really powerful deck enters the meta it it drives away new players it drives away enfranchised players because those players no don't want to play anymore and it's really sad because it it compounds the issue because then the only people remaining are the evil people who like using those evil decks and the oh dear oh do we get some mana tithe oh my goodness that's probably the best mana tithe i've ever seen in my life yeah, let's see what's in the hand with the old Spellbinder here. Wow, that, I think I would have just lost the game if it was the... Oh my goodness. Um, What's... Alright, I think we make them use the Farewell. Because it's going to be... The Farewell will just get rid of two creatures, but the... The Shadrick Silver Quill would have given them a lot of advantage overall over time. So. Wait, what did I get rid of? Am I going insane? I thought I discarded this. Did I just. I actually don't know what's going on here. So. I'm going I'm to, when I watch this video back, I swear to God I discarded the Shader Ace, but oh well. So they give us a creature and they get a counter. Little thing. So I think this is, this is really quite, this is bait because, let me think about this for a sec. So Farewell can't get rid of Planeswalkers. So we could just... We could just go for the... Luca. Because we've got three flying blockers, it's all good. So... Man, people are probably shouting in the comments right now. You did discard the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, so we'll discard the Myrell, I think. Because I want to keep the lower end escape. Wow, drawing drawing two is kind of cool. I always forget. I always forget what this side does because there's so many words, man. Like cards these days have you need to have reading glasses to actually read what it says. 
but I'm crazy. So if, if he does decide to use farewell, then all the creatures go. Obviously the artifacts stay, planeswalkers stay. Graveyards probably go. Not 100% sure on that one. Anything they give us here is just really good. Wow, they're gonna give us Give us a card. That is bizarre. I don't think I would ever give someone a card. I feel like that's kind of crazy. So dies, which means that swords will just straight up exile the Shadrix. Let's discard a card again. Not really bothered about those boots, to be honest. Okay, God's willing. Do I want to kill the Shadrix? Or do I don't... Do I... Yeah, we'll get rid of it. It's easy when it's an exile to get rid of forever when Retrotrap it doesn't bring it back, isn't it? We probably... We can probably kill these two if we want. As well. It slows them down a little bit. And the, the interesting thing is we even have blocks for the Rattled Rabbit. I've just noticed the Phyrexian Tower is really sick in the deck though. Because if they played any Legend they can just kill it with the tower. And then it comes back once again. I suppose we just... Everybody loses all their things, or...? Oh, the the Wretched Sorrow. Now... Hexproof will be enough to not only save it, but it will survive the combat as well. That's kind of cool. So we keep the Spellbinder after this trade. Trade with the Inkling. Okay. The farewell's not looking so great here. All creatures. Damn, that's... <laughs> much respect for that spellbinder. Oh my. So... What creatures are in here? Anything good? I've got Morel. So, Luca's good with, with the ET Beast in the graveyard, but we don't actually have any ETB creatures that are really worth it. So, we're probably just going to discard... The God's Willing. Uh, we, we could have emblemed there. Alright, we're going to do something funky. We're going to make spirits, guys. We're going to make spirits. And then we're going to pump the spirits up with Basriget. This is a weird game, but it's it's cool. It's, you know, doing, doing different things that we haven't seen. <laughs> Spirits for the win. Weird looking spirit things. <clears throat> Daxo's come out to play. And our planeswalkers might just win us the game eventually. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, nice. It's uh, That was an interesting game. It's As I said, it's just nice to see different things that you don't normally see. So thank you for that game. Hello everybody, the brand new Shadows of Innistrad or Innistrad Remastered or whatever the f it's called, Innistrad Remastered set. It's just come out and it's introduced loads of cards from the Innistrad block of old. It's a bit confusing because this is a digital only release. So it's, you just basically have to kind of look in the set and see what they've included or excluded. I don't think it's every single card but it's just kind of like the ones I've curated. I could be wrong there, but all that I care about is that Archangel Avacyn has now launched on Arena, which I think is really cool. I think she's a very exciting card, especially for me. I, I do like to run her in Paper Commander in the 99, but it's cool to see if she can actually be good as a commander as well. She's really versatile and has so many words on this that it makes her kind of, I think definitely a staple in Burrows decks. So she's a Flash Flying Vigilance, which is already really powerful uh, as a finisher, as a protector, as a way to 
It just does all sorts of stuff. So once it comes in, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. So if somebody board wipes, including yourself, you can protect your team by flushing her in. So if you do something like, I don't know, Deafening, Deafening Clarion, three damage to each creature, flash Avacyn in response to this resolving, and then you'll save your team. If you don't want to save your team, however, uh, whenever a non-angel creature dies, transform her at the beginning of the next upkeep. And then she becomes a 6-5 flying with, when she transforms, deals 3 damage to each other creature and each other opponent. So it's really cool flavour. Just basically shows that she flipped out when, uh, this was when Emrakul was essentially corrupting the plane of Innistrad and making all the angels and all the good guys kind of evil. And she started killing humans as well as vampires and all sorts. And that's sadly why Sorin had to end her, because uh, if you didn't know, Avacyn was actually made by Sorin Markov, which is kind of weird that a vampire would make an angel, but the reasoning was because the baddies of Innistrad were eating too many humans. So he was like, look, if we eat all the humans, there's not going to be any humans left. So he had to create Avacyn to stop that, the over-harvesting of humans. And she was good for a while, until she got corrupted. But if you check out the story for Innistrad, it's really good. It follows two or three sets. Um, blocks, should I say? And uh, but yeah, if we get into the deck tech, so it's basically a Boris control deck, which is kind of strange. Don't normally see decks like this. You never actually see white red decks at all, sadly, because blue, black, green is just so powerful, and um, uh, white red decks are very underrepresented. But that's cool because my channel, uh, I try and showcase stuff that you don't normally see. So the deck, it's interesting because there's not that many obvious win cons i think amazon is one but the thing that white red kind of struggles with is card advantage so we've got all the cards in here that basically give you a bit of advantage you've got archivist of ogma draw of your opponent tutors charming prince lets you scry a couple the low warhound gives you a land if your opponent has more than you norn's wellspring is an interesting new addition whenever a creature dies put a counter on this and then you can remove two counters to draw a card it's very slow but it's one of the few ways you can consistently draw. Spirited Companion's great as well, comes and draw a card. And all these ETB things are really nice because we're going to synergize it with Alish Norn if possible. So if you want to put lots more ETBs in, feel free to do so because she's just a really good just synergy piece. And there's some cards I think you can't leave home without in a Boros deck. Showdown the Scales, probably the best card in the deck because it exiles the top four cards and you can play them until the end of your next turn and then when you recast spells later on you put counters on your creatures and it just makes them just amazing win cons just smash in reconstruct history is quite nice because you can return an artifact an enchantment an instant and a sorcery to your hand from the graveyard and exile this so this could be draw four as well so there are a few surprising boros cards that do things like this um law hold commands actually quite good as well lets you draw a couple of cards make a blocker Give your team indestructible haste. Surprisingly good. Definitely a win con in some cases. And yeah, the deck is interesting. Last thing I'll probably mention for card advantage is Seek. You want to definitely make the most of that. I think Seek was definitely designed for decks that didn't have draw. So Soul Stealer Axe is probably one of the best ones because it's uh, repeatable. And you can get constant advantage by doing this over and over again by hitting over the top. And because Avacyn's got flying, it should be easy to do that you can even make it a voltron strategy if you wanted but i've recently done an equipment deck and they don't really seem that popular so something like this a bit more good stuff star deck hopefully it's more popular if you want to see the deck list it's in the description below as usual and yeah let's get into the gameplay if you're watching this video bubba well here you go here's an attractor so um Another content creator, the great Bubba, we uh, we talk on Discord and we we're talking the other day about how he doesn't really encounter a Traxa, and I was saying how I encounter like every other video, uh, sorry every other game, kind of crazy. How often I see you? I guess it, it's random to some extent, but it just feels like quite common for some reason. But and not common for other people, so yeah. Guess we can start with the Eidolon. Stuff like this is interesting because it it's slightly taxy and I want to be able to tax a few things. I was thinking about taxing ETBs, but because my deck uses ETBs, I don't really want to do that. So I have to think of different things. So if we actually had Elish Norn out here, the Oracle wouldn't have got the money thing, but it's all good. So probably go for the Warhound. 
gives us an extra land. Gets us a bit closer to Avacyn as well. I don't really like my chances being a mono white deck versus four colours, which feels like five. Attracts are not having red. Doesn't really make a difference, which is definitely a flavour fail in my opinion. I don't really get why when you get to four colours, you can kind of just do what the hell you want. And it just means it's not four colours anymore, it's five colours. The same enigma happens with colourless, I've noticed. When things get to, you know, rare or mythic and colourless, they just do whatever the hell they want anyway. Like you look at the six mana Ugin or the eight mana Ugin, they just do everything. So the question here is what's the difference between colourless and five colour? Or four colour and five colour? You know? If they slapped haste onto this, oh wow, suddenly it's, you know, red. So we missed a land drop, which is not good. They've got two mana open. What could it be? Uh, try and cast some. I mean, they could just have counters. It's a bit boring, but that's what tracks of players like to do. They might try and counter the Illuminar Gasparant or kill it. Okay, they could even have a board wipe. Nothing is safe, but this creature decks are quite risky. But this is why I think Avacyn's kind of cool. If they block, it's highly likely that they have a wipe because they're trying to mitigate as much damage as possible. And they might not have any flicker effects, so that would save the Sylvan Ranger and re-enable it, but not entirely sure. They might enjoy scrying one on the Oracle. Black Market Connections, okay. So they're going to be able to get Atraxa next turn, which is horrendous. But if we get a land, an Elish Norn, might slow them down a bit because then they'll have to kill the Elish Norn, otherwise they're not going to get anything with the Atraxa. So that's one good reason to keep Elish Norn in, in your white decks. Okay, so still none. And we can't double spell this turn. God, that's a real shame. That's going to cost us the game, I think, not getting that extra land. Uh, we can go for the extraction special, so this will get us an extra land if it resolves, because the Warhound comes back in. Hopefully, unless they exile it. No. Yeah, this is a shame. And also the the Oracle of the Alpha is annoying as well, because it's, it's giving them powerful cards in the deck that then can be found with the Atraxis, so something like... What should we put it on here? Lifelink could be good. I guess we'll put it on Lifelink for now in hopes that next turn we can swing in. But Yeah, because only the downside of the Oracle of the Alpha is that you don't see those cards for a while. But Attractor looks in the top 10. So, oh, they're going to flicker it. So it's going to block, create the power 9 again. So they've got the power 18 in the deck now. And they can block. Well, they must think they're so clever. All, all to block a 1-1, one, one, I suppose. So we don't have any removal, so we probably just get killed to Traxxas. So you can see, Bubba, it's not fun playing a Traxxas, because there's not much you can do when you're playing what feels like Monocolor versus 4-5 Color. They've got their own Elish Norns. They're going to get two triggers on their Traxxas if they get to cast it. Hmm. And a Time Warp. Absolute cancer. As if they had Elish Norn into Time Walk, it's like textbook horrendousness. But why would they want to look in the top 20 cards? It just feels... I think Elish Norn in this deck is overkill, but I suppose the reason... The the real reason the Elish Norn's in the deck is to stop opposing Atraxas, which just goes to show how many Atraxas are actually in the format. People are running... running to stop the one, the thing they're using. Yeah, I don't think there's much we can do here because they have a 7-7 lifelink now and the life loss is kind of negligible when they have this. Even if we did kill the Atraxa, we'd have to deal with the Elish Norn, which has 7 toughness, okay, Mox Emeralds, and a binding so they can kill anything they want next turn as well. So we'll probably get one more draw and just see what we draw, but it's unlikely that we'll continue, sadly. And this isn't the kind of gameplay that I want to bring you guys, but... It's topical, I suppose. It, it's um, indicative of the time and the area we're in. So if I didn't show you, probably a bit disingenuous. 
just want to be realistic with you all as you build decks and see how uh, the experiences I go through to maybe aid you in having a better time playing yourself. Because if you're not learning, watching these videos, then I don't feel like I'm doing my job, really. They managed to time warp. So yeah, I'm just going to concede here. That's ridiculous because they're going to be able to swing in with the Attractor following turn. And yeah, that's pretty much game. Considering how much removal they have in the hand, there's no way we can come back from this. Okay, bringing us first with Trellisara, life gain rival. Seems innocent, but it's not. Trust me, this is this is a very powerful deck. It's basically Soul Sisters. Any modern players out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, if you haven't played modern, Soul Sisters is a deck where you basically play stuff that gains your life, and then things that profit from that. Most famously, a Johnny's Pride Mate. When you gain life, put a counter on it. Simple, effective. And there's lots of types, uh, lots of different types of the Johnny's Pride Mate card. So. Sentinel turn one. Now that's pretty annoying. We may be giving them a card here. Depending on what, what they do next. If they give it protection... That's going to be very sad because they're going to get basically free card from us. No? Okay, not sad to see that one go. Lunark Veteran. Private class. Alright. Can we establish our field? Please. More lands. Would be nice. Do they have a green source? I wonder. That would certainly stop them from playing Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering! Magic the Gathering used to be such a great game. And, uh, I don't know, Arena Arena makes it Arena makes it pretty hard sometimes to enjoy the game, sadly. There you go, there's the Pride Mate. So whenever that comes in, they gain a life. Okay. So I guess there's no point attacking. I don't really want to use the God's Willing there, but if they attack in, maybe I don't know. Feels feels like a waste, really. Oh my goodness! They've just got loads of different Ajani's Pride mates. So board wipe's going to be fantastic if we can. So do they want to trade? I, I think I would actually trade with the God's Willing here if they attacked in. This will die instead of the Luminarch Aspirant. Oh, they put it on full control. Yeah, they still have the life gain trigger. Okay. Okay, well... I suppose our Aspirant is doing a very similar role to their life gain creatures. I just think they're just... If they don't get any green mana, they're probably just going to quit the game, aren't they? Let's face it. They must have made the deck in a rush because these are the... Uh, these are not exactly the lands that you've seen all people... Like, this, this is the kind of thing I talk about in my old videos where you can tell a lot about an opponent just by the things they do and the things they use. They, they clearly care enough about full art cards because you can see Shadow Spear and Lunar Veteran are full art here. But the deck was probably made hastily because these lands are not full art. And they're not that special, to be honest. So if they attack with a cat, we're going to exile it with a Paragon. Uh, sorry, the Wandering Emperor. Still not attacking. What the hell? Bizarre. They're just terrified of a uh, settle the wreckage, aren't they? Strike fast and strike hard. So do we go for the Elspeth here, or do we go for the Paragon? Let's get a blocker. May your 
and let's get something from the top of the deck. Come on, fingers crossed. Okay, we get a dog. And yeah, we might as well just make our whole team stronger. Shield counter as well. I always forget that she puts a shield counter on something. That's actually... That's really good. That's super good. Also, the, if we... If this does die for whatever reason, we can recast it with the Sarah Paragon as well. So because Red White doesn't really have that much card advantage, like raw card advantage, we want to gain advantage in different ways. Stuff like tokens and counters. You know, just... Incremental advantage. Just little things. This does have trample. Hmm. Trample lifelink. Alright, straight. We can recast this with the Sarah Paragon. Unless they've got protection here, that'd be annoying. But game four, that becomes a six-six. Touche. Good old fashioned combat tricks. And they had to get the scrying as well, just because. So they deal one damage to the Wandering Emperor. Hmm. Sneaky. Light of Hope. Not a great card, but... Right. What to do? I think we'll go for the Paragon here. Which gets the Aspirant. Another counter on, I guess, the dog. Then we can put another counter on the dog. Let's make the dog a super dog. Uh, flying. And just keep pumping that dog up. So, as you can see, counters make a big difference. Like, imagine you removed all the counters from all the creatures on the field. It wouldn't be that... Bad, would it? This would be a 2-2, and a 2-2 here, and a 1-1 one, one here. But counters make things artificially strong. And it's an uh, interesting part of the game that isn't really explored anymore, because let's face it, everyone uses tracks and stuff like that. So so the attack, we can triple block if we want to. Do they have a way to just randomly gain life there? That's the issue. If the Aspirant goes away, it goes away forever. Because you can only recast something once with the Paragon from the graveyard. Double attack. They don't like the Emperor, do they? This doesn't have Trample. I've... They're both the same. Is it worth just losing the Emperor? Fine, but I, we're going to take out the Pride Mate on the way, hopefully. Please don't have a way to gain life. If they do, uh, it's going to be really sad. To think they haven't drawn an actual green land yet, and they're still kicking our ass quite a lot. I mean, they've got more life than us, fewer lands than us, and yet their creatures are stronger. Okay, we kill that cat. Thank goodness. And they still have a 6-6 six, six and getting stronger. At, you know, it's pretty damn good. Right. Let's put another counter on these guys. I think Vigilance would be good here on the dog. This is your fight. We'll so we now have a very amazing attacker. Four. Three, four, five, six. So we can flash in the Avacyn as well and use God's Willing. We've got a fantastic field here, guys. Why are they using Shadow Sphere? Okay, they just don't want to essentially keep holding priority up, which I completely understand. Okay. So we are safe from board wipes and exile effects, really, with the gods willing. Only a farewell would uh, really screw us over, to be honest. Who would have thought it, hey? Mono White giving us a run for our money here. It's not even a mono white deck, it's a white green deck.
if they attack it, it's going to be a very silly move. Okay, they're not they're not that silly. That's good. Gaining life. Probably not the best time to do that because let's say I had a card that said deal seven damage. I could have done it there, but they didn't use it as a in response. Ooh, so we can flicker something. But let's use Elsworth here. This is my city, and I'm going. Ooh, let's get Redain out. Awesome. Give this to the dog. Vigilance flying. It's going to be tough for them. Down to 33. That's still more life than they started with. Goodness me. You also get to draw a card. The Redain here making it impossible for them to cast spell non creature spells at cost 4. Or greater because they only have four mana so they're gonna need six mana to cast anything big might be good they're lucky though because they don't have snow lands which means the snow lands uh well the lands will just come in regularly apparition what are you going for harrigan probably we do have the gods winning though pro white don't quit oh come on Ah, oh, it's a shame. All, all the good games that I record, um, people just finish early. I hope you understand that uh, as a viewer. Just a little disclaimer. Uh, when I record these videos, it, it's taking me hours tonight. It's taking me literally hours because uh, whenever I do well, people quit early. So that footage isn't really good. Whenever I do bad, it's boring because it's always the same way I die. It's like Atraxas, you know, the same stuff you see every day. So I just hope you appreciate it when I record games it's not always what you think it is you might see three games 30 minutes you think oh it's not enough but in reality I've recorded for at least three hours tonight and I have to edit this and it's just very time consuming so yeah that's where the you know donations come in if anyone wants to donate really appreciate it or even become a channel member where you get benefits like I look at your deck list and I can make it into a video so yeah hope you enjoyed today's games and I'll see you next time. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.